Hey everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really sweet swinging card. Now, obviously when I light down like this for the camera, it, it's not gonna swing. So I'm gonna edit in a quick video now of me swinging this really cute little sloth. So it gives you an idea of how it works and you can see there it all falls flat and I've done it so that it's kind of got little feet because I just thought it was a nice little touch but that goes down and yeah it's just it's just so fun I mean you can kind of see there um, it just flows really freely and then on the back I've used another one of the images which I'm going to show you and um, you've got all that space there to be able to you know stamp and write your message it's six by six size you could do this any size to be fair um, I probably no because when it stands up it's fine but I might stick down a few of the ends of the green kind of um, you know leaves and stuff on the back there just so they don't catch but um, otherwise it's, it's really good if I bring it up there you can see all of the little flowers have all got little rhinestones on them and it says let's hang out with some white embossing powder it's very easy to do so let me show you how Okay, so this is the stamps that I used. It's by Creative Stamps and it's the Sweet Sloths and you've got some nice um, little sentiments there as well. Nice kind of just outline stamps, so they're really plain but that makes them perfect for colouring. I don't like too much kind of black detail and um, yeah, just really enjoyed those ones and I will share you, share you? I'll show you a quick little video in a moment of me colouring them. But also it comes with the, well it doesn't come with it but part of the collection there's some swans and there's um, these lovely otters and if you've you know subscribed to me for a while you would have seen me use the otters in the water card. So if you're new to the channel and you're thinking oh a water card it's really fun and I use actual water in the card. Click up here and you'll be able to go and see how I made that card and um, yeah it's very very fun and again really really cute lovely images. Then I've just got some circle dies. I'm just using the plain um, Sizzix ones. These are at the bottom. And then just, I've gone ahead and die cut all these bits and I've done all the colouring. But like I said, I'll link in the video. But I just use the Fern Border, the Bright Rosa one. But any kind of foliage and things like that. But I do go to them a lot because I've just got a nice little mix. And um, I've done two colours. So I've got the light and the dark green there. So I've done them. And then, yeah, you can see all of my stamped images there so just bring them up aren't they sweet I mean you can have them obviously that way it doesn't have to always be upside down but uh, they are very very cute so I'll share the video of me coloring this all in now Like I said, I've chosen to do this on a six by six, but once you see how I do it, it's very easy to do it on any kind of top folding size card that you want. So this is a piece of 12 by six, and along the 12 inch side, you just want to score it six inches and fold in half. If you've already got some colored pre-made cards, then perfect. This is, I think, 250, but by the time we put the mats and layers on, um, it does become very strong. Then I have got a piece of, well, I've got two pieces of white, one for the back, one for the front. 
it's optional if you want to do the front you might just want to keep you know a colored piece it's up to you again once you see what I do but these are five and three quarters squared and then I've got this piece which is I use this in a card that I shared not too long ago and it's that sky background and I just thought it worked quite well with this so it's the other half of the 12 by 12 sheets so I've used one in there and then I've got this one left it's five and seven eighths of an inch because you just want to come in a little bit by five and three quarters but I think that's because it was scrap but you can do five and seven eighths squared will be fine and uh, that's going to go in our background and then this is for the stand I mean it is an optional piece but I think it does help because you've got a tiny little bit of bulk inside here with the mechanism it does kind of want to push the card out so by having that stand it it stops it, it you know it is it's a stopper it stops that card spreading out any further than it needs to so I do recommend it but you know play around see what you think so this is a piece of three by six and along the three inch side you just want to score at half an inch one and a half and two and a half <laughs> I was about to say two and three quarters there, but it's not. I'll say that again, half an inch, one and a half, and two and a half. Then I've got these pieces here. So this is for the little kind of mechanism inside. There's two parts to it ish, but this one I will show you at the end because you stick it to your stamped image and everybody's is going to be different, so the size might vary. But this piece you want to keep at half an inch by two, and along the two inch side, you just want to score at a quarter of an inch and one inch and one and three quarters okay and then just have another piece of white card like a strip at the minute like I said mine's half an inch but I probably will trim that a little bit so that's all the scoring and everything done there okay so first of all we can open up the card and stick our background piece so whatever it is whatever your theme that you're doing and I want mine to be like so I'm going to stick that one on the back and again I'm using my Kalau glue and um, like I said, that will just add that strength to the card. I love how it all folds flat and um, it's easy for someone to understand when they take it out of the envelope. They don't have to do too much with it, just kind of open it up. So that's gonna go inside there. Okay, with this piece here, you're just gonna fold and burnish all the score lines. Oh, I was just looking for my other bone folder and then I dropped it and it's down the back of my desk so <laughs> that's why I'm using that one which I still love it's my bamboo one so you've got something like that and what you're going to do is we're going to once we die cut the front but you're going to stick that in there and then that one there I've done green on this one because it ties in with the green and the jungle kind of theme that one was white which is still fine but probably now in hindsight I probably would have done that green as well but I'm still very happy with that card and then these ones we will stick and die cut in a moment. So next you want to grab your circle dies and we're going to cut the aperture, the window in the front. Okay, so from this set, I'm using the two largest ones. Okay, so I'll give you a rough um, measurement of mine and you just want to get something, you know, as close to that really. You might want to do square, you might want to do a, a decorative edged one, but if you are doing circles, mine's four and a quarter and this one is um three and three quarters so out of those two the three and three quarter one is the one you want to die cut first this one we actually use just to create this ring detail so if you do want to add that in we'll do that in a moment but make sure so i've just stuck that there so you're going to die cut this the, your, your front one so just fold it out there and then i'm just going to use some washi tape and you want to get this right in the middle unless you want to do something up here don't go too close to the edges you know you want to give yourself a little bit of cardstock so you, it keeps its stability because otherwise it will start to kind of um well just probably bend so i'm going to go about there and with any kind of washi tapes and even the purple tapes i still find they could lift cardstock so i always stick it onto the, the cardstock that i don't want you know i mean if it comes off perfect i'll keep it in my scraps but i'd rather it rip this piece than my actual card so i'm just going to run that through my dye machine okay so now i can just take that one off and then what we're going to do is with one of those white pieces so these are your five and three quarters squared we're going to stick one of these well eventually we're going to stick it over the front there with a nice even border so if you flip it over actually if I do it this way put it on the inside so you've got a nice even border and fold it down okay and then just draw around that circle like so do you make sure get it really lined up get that border perfect okay like I said fold it over I can see my pencil line there and then 
again with that smaller one, line it back up again and just run that through your die machine. Okay, and this is only, you only have to do that if you want to have this white piece and a border. You know I like a border. <laughs> so I'm um, just going to take off some of those little feathery bits. I find some of my dies, mainly, actually that's Sizzix one, that just leaves like a little, there we go, comes straight off, but I just need to get rid of it because it bugs me. So now I can just line that back up. I have to move it around, might have been that way. There it is. <laughs> You'll find it fit. So that's because my circle's probably not bang in the middle. So just move it around until you get it back where you were. But now you can see I've got that nice even border and it covers my circle. So I'm just gonna stick that one down and then we can cut our frame. Okay, then I've got this piece of green card, which is the same green that I've used for some of these sprigs here. So it just kind of ties everything together and it works well with the color that I've used as well. But um, I'm gonna, grab the larger one and that one and some washi tape which I've got here and you want to make a little ring again completely optional but it's just these little details that I do like to add to my cards so just sit the smaller one inside making sure you've got a nice even gap you know that that kind of ring there that green ring that you can see is the same all the way around or as close as and um, Again, just run that through your die machine. Okay, and then you will have this piece and that's what you want. These are obviously great, keep these because you can use them for toppers and other projects. But now with that one, I am going to grab my glue and just stick it. And if you have got any pink, I've got a tiny little bit of pink showing there. This will cover that up. So, um, and plus by the time I add all my little, um, you know, flowers and leaves and things, you know, it's always good when you've got your kind of stamps and embellishments because if there are any areas and you think, oh, I need to cover that. Um, I've said this before in tutorials, but it's funny when my mum's made a card and she shows me and I see like a rogue embellishment and I say to her, was that one needed? She goes, yeah, it's covering a bit of glue or a pen mark or, or something. It's just, it's funny. So um, we all do it. And again, just take a little bit of that. There it is. Just see little bits there, they bug me. Okay, so now the card is ready. So I've got that kind of sky cloudy background there and then we've got all this plain, but it's, I mean, you're going to see how it's all going to come together. It's going to look so pretty. So what I would suggest now is you want to start placing these pieces, your background details. So if you're going to do any of that, I mean, you might have like a countryside background, you might have some mountains, you might have some waves. So whatever it is that you want to do and start laying out your pieces. And I'm also just thinking it might be worthwhile sticking one part of this in first, um, just on the back there. So I'm going to grab, I mean, you can sit this down first if you want and then cut this so it completely covers that if you don't want to have any of the frame. But you don't really see this when it's inside, so I'm not too worried. But I'm just going to just spread that glue all out there. And then you just want to oh, make sure it's up the right way. So you want this edge here to line up with the bottom of the card and it's exactly six inches in width, like so. And I just think it's a nice little bit of detail. I mean, you don't have to do that like that. You, can, you know, there's other ways to add little kind of hinges or stoppers, whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm just going to burnish that down a minute, just so it's kind of out my way. But now I can start, this is the area that I want to start to create these pieces coming in. And um, just kind of, you know, do different colours, like alternate them. I don't want it to look perfect, but I don't want it to, I don't want to have all the cream like on one side, for example. All the lighter colour on one side, you know. And um, some of these are pull off the edges because I don't need them that long. But I just want it to look like it's all kind of creeping in on the sloth. You know, it's a real lush, overgrown part of the forest. And um, and just kind of place it all down. And once you're happy where it is, then just tack it down with a little bit of glue. You don't need lots. You don't want glue kind of oozing out everywhere. But just, there's a few bits, like I said on that one, there's the odd leaf that's kind of catching. So I just need to make sure that's stuck down because you don't want anything to interfere with the, the swing of whatever it is that you've got. 
but um, you can see there what I'm doing. I'm going to have that one down the bottom here, and then I'll have maybe that one there. I'll have that one there, and then this one there. So I'm going to keep them all within that blue. He's going to be right in the centre of that piece there. Um, and when the card obviously then stops, he will cover right there in the middle. And um, just, you know, whatever it is you're having hanging, just kind of place, you know, roughly as well. And you can bring this down, you know, you can see how it's all going to kind of look. And then we'll build up with all these lovely pieces all on the front there. And he's going on the back. So I used him on that card, so I'm using him on the front of this one. And he's going to go on the back for some detail there. So I'm going to go and get this all stuck down. Okay, so that's all stuck down, but I've got little bits that lift, so I still want a tiny little bit of dimension there. Next, you want this piece here. So you would have scored those three score lines. You want to fold these ones, so they are mountains, and then that middle one as a valley. And this whole middle section here, we're going to stick together. Okay, so just put some glue on one side and then fold it up so you have these two flaps. Okay, and then you want to, might be better actually to put a hole in first. Now, I am using my cropper dial and I'm using the smaller hole. If you don't have this, you don't want to, well, I guess actually you could do the larger hole. If anything, maybe that might still work quite well because it will let the brad really kind of move freely, but the small one's still enough room for the brad to move freely as well. So you will be okay with the normal size hole punch there actually. Okay, but I am going to, if anybody does have the cropper dial, I'll just punch this, you can see where I've just done that. Oh. So towards the bottom, but make sure you leave kind of the same gap there that you've got on the sides. Okay, you can just see where I've put that. All right, next we're gonna add some glue onto these two here. And the middle part here needs to line up with the middle score line. Oh, let's just come undone, there we go. Okay, so one half is going to stick on this side and one half is going to stick on this side and you want it to be bang in the middle. So it might be worthwhile, because you can cover this straight up, grab a pencil and just mark at, six, um, at three inches. So I'm just going to put a pencil mark there and then I can stick this right over because you want whatever it is hanging to hang obviously right in the center of your circle. So make sure it's stuck on, one, on both sides and as you fold it down, push it up into there and then fold that down. You can lift it back up again in a minute, you just want it to, you want to get it in place and I can feel where it is, yeah he's going to hang, yeah he'll hang fine. You just don't want to end up finding it hang kind of really far over to one side. But now if I open that up, can you see where that's stuck? Make sure it's all glued together as well but it should be able to open and close and that piece is there. See, mine still keep, keeps on sticking in the middle because I need, didn't let that dry enough, but it's, it's fine where it is. So I'm just gonna close that up for the minute. Just rest that on top and just let that dry. Okay, this is now secure and you wanna do another hole at the end of this piece. Okay, then you wanna grab a brad so I am using some smaller ones that I've got here. Can you see that? I mean, you're not going to see this. It doesn't really matter the colour. But I am also going to cut them just, not in half, but just cut a little bit off so you just haven't got the tails as long. So you can just see there. Just cut them short a little bit. And then pop them through, pop them, pop, pop it through that one. And then pop this one on there. But when you open up the split, pin part you don't want to really push them down tight on this you just want to kind of bend them over I find a pokey tool works with this but if you just push the boat pokey tool down through the middle it will split them apart and just kind of just just gently see already that's a little bit too tight you don't want to what you might find worth doing is put like a bone folder in there and then fold it and fold it onto the bone folder and then remove the bone folder. So you've got a gap and can you see how freely that now moves? Okay, 
so you can see there. So maybe put yeah, put like that underneath or something, you know, just something that gives it a little bit of a gap once you take it away. If I just put my ruler there and then I can push down on it. It will still all close and flat, you know, and go in the envelope, you can see there. But now, if I was to bring that up, again, you're not it's, it's only when it stands upright, but that completely moves. You can just about see it there freely and that's what you want and once we add a bit of weight so this here will weigh it down and also the decoration that I put on there but we will trim this okay now we can stick this piece down because you need it to be all together now really to attach everything and but do make sure that that swings nice and freely before you stick this down because it'd be quite fiddly to get into once it's together so now I'm just going to line that one up like so, just hold that there for a minute. Okay, so now I want to get my cute sloth and I want him, see that's the middle there, I want him to be right in the middle of this circle. So I need to trim that, that bit off there just so it doesn't hang out the bottom. And then I'm going to add glue there and then just have him kind of like that and then this bit here I'm going to cover with the flowers and the vines because you can see here you just see a little bit there because he was a bit taller like longer but there's a little bit there so it carries on into the image okay so that's what I wanted to to do so next it is now all that decoration he's going to go on the back so we don't need to worry about him but I'm just going to build up a cluster down here and a cluster up here kind of had that one to start there. It, I cut all these on my scanner cup and that one obviously I didn't see because I didn't look in great detail but it missed that bit. It ch cut that chunk off which is amongst here somewhere. But um, I'm just going to start building little clusters and I find my hot glue worked best because it was just quick. You can just see now. I'll just place that one down there and get these. I don't stick everything down because I like to feed things underneath. So I keep, you know, like that's all free. It's just the glue there because I like to slot things under. So I'm going to get all that done. I'll put this on high speed. So that is everything stuck down. I'm going to finish it with some little embellishments. I've got really tiny ones. I also went ahead, you would have seen me just stick the back down there as well. I didn't want to waste any of those little, um, you know, the leaves and the flowers there. So I thought I'd pop them on the back as well. But like I said, I can, you know, stamp there. It's still flat enough for me to stamp it. Or I've got some um, sentiments I can stick on there as well. But it's easy to write on. But he does really, again, can you kind of see... You can kind of see him rocking there. But like I said, if I tilt it back too far, then it just won't. So yeah, finish it with embellishment and a sentiment. Okay, so for the sentiment, usually I do this before, but because I'm doing a little bit of heat embossing, um, I thought I'd keep it in. So I've got a bit of black cardstock here, which I'm just going to pop down at the bottom here. I've got my anti-static powder here. You just want to cover that. All right, don't worry if it dulls the black cardstock. You can sort that out afterwards, but really make sure that that is covered and you've got, you know, no greasy marks or sticky fingers or anything like that on it. So on that one there, I said, let's hang out. And then on the back, I might put as it's your birthday or on your birthday. This one here, I'm going to have relax on your birthday. So I'm going to take that one and that one and just to position these. If you're ever working with new um, stamps I always write, rub them on my hand and um, it just gets off any residue you know or give them a wash in warm soapy water that might come from the factory. I've got so many bits of glue, I've got all sorts of all the alcohol marker pen on me and everything. What I'm going to do actually is stick the relax down separately. I'm going to stamp this first, see where it is, and then I can line that one up. So because I'm going to use Versamark on black cardstock, you'll be able to see it really well. So I'm just going to 
pick that one up. I'm not too worried if it's not straight at the minute because I'm going to trim it a little bit on my trimmer. But just ink that one up. So I can see that perfectly. So I'll take that one off and then I can bring in the relax. I can get that just so it's got a nice kind of gap the same as everything else. Keep it nice and straight. It might be a little wonky there, but I think we're okay. Hey ho, don't mind if it's a little bit crooked. No, I think I think we're right. I'm happy with that. So then I have got use this little bit of scrap card here and I'm using the Wow Embossing Powder and it's the Opaque Bright White and it's super fine. I love this one for whenever I do any sentiments on black cardstock because it just, wow, it's just lovely. It's just, a, like I said, that real crisp white colour. So what you want to do with this is make sure, just tap the back and just brush off any, I've got a massive brush here. Let me get my smaller one. I want to make sure you just get rid of all the little extra bits there, all the strays. I have a video on how to get perfect embossing, heat embossing, so I'll link that one because um, it's a, quite a common question that people ask me. And then whenever I heat emboss black, I tend to heat from the underside up because it won't blow any loose little pieces. And um, you know, the last thing you want is a ton of white speckles. You know, sometimes it looks good if you're looking for that effect, but um, if it's not what you want, it can be quite frustrating. But now I'm happy with that. I've got nothing anywhere where it shouldn't be. With your heat gun, make sure it gets very hot first. So leave it just going for about 30 seconds and then heat set it. Okay, so there's my really nice embossed or heat embossed sentiment. Um, what I do is obviously go underneath and then give it a blast on the front once it's all taken as well. But it's warped, you can see there, but I run it through my dye machine. So I tend to put it with a bit of paper over there so you don't get any kind of impression. But run that through so you'll see it just becomes a lot flatter. Once we put something to um, you know, adhere it to our card with as well, that will keep it all flat. So now I just want to trim that down a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that, and then I'm just going to trim a couple of strips of some foam and then just stick that on the back. And then I'm going to stick this the same as before, kind of now it's going to have to go down a little bit further, stick this one here. There we go. Relax on your birthday, I love that. And then, get rid of those. I'm just going to pull out, I think it was those ones that I used. And I'm just going to stick them all into the centres of the flowers. And it just gave it a little bit of shine again, completely optional, but I just use the yellow on the yellow and the pink on the pink and so on. I've got some orange there as well, so I'm going to go and do that quickly. Okay, so there's that one finished. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So relax on your birthday and let's hang out. I just think they are stunning, stunning cards and I love these images. So I hope it's inspired you. You can have anything hanging here. You know, you could have some flowers hanging. You could have, you know, a, make it into a swing. There's just all kinds of things that you can do with this. So just have a look at your stamps you know, and um, and have some fun with it because I really enjoyed this and I love the little addition on the back there as well. So I hope it's inspired you. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, please give me a thumbs up if you have and consider subscribing so you get to see more fun tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.